Hey guys, I thought I'd do a quick update. Finally got my LS3 block back. Uh, it's nicely been bored out, nicely cleaned up. There's absolutely no irregularities in the barrels whatsoever. And I had the deck decked. Um, the reason why I did that is because the stock pistons had a compression height of 1.115, whereas the pistons that I purchased, the compression height was 1.115. One zero zero, so it was off by five thousand. So I decked a block to even it out. So the pistons, when they come up a bit at the top of the cylinder, um, they stop at the same spot they did originally. I got a six cc dish in it, which would normally, if this was a six point two liter, would drop the compression down to like nine and a half to one. But because I got it stroked and it's going up to a four sixteen, actually in my last video I said three sixteen. I don't know where I got that number from. Anyways, since it's being stroked out to a 416, the piston's going down farther in the barrel, so you got more volume, you got more compression when the piston comes up. So that extra 3 cc's, because the L92 heads, or pistons I should say, had valve reliefs. And these ones have valve reliefs and a little slight dish in them. So the extra 3 cc dish is going to make up the difference. My compression is still going to go up. I'll um, calculate it at approximately 11.2 to 1, 11.3 to 1, somewhere around there. And the number I, f I came up with is because my 70 cc heads are no longer 70 cc's because I also had them decked. So now they're 68 and a half cc's. So if you do the math, it works out. Anyways, um, I sent the rotating assembly to get balanced. So I have absolutely nothing here to show you guys other than I got the block back. When I got my block back, I got my pistons back so I could send it out with the rest of the stuff to get balanced. Um, the other thing, so I ended up replacing my stall converter I had a 2500 RPM stall in it. Now I got a 3000 RPM stall in it. It's slightly smaller than the original stall converter or the 2500 RPM stall converter, I should say. So it's gonna launch a lot better off the line. Not that it didn't have a problem before, but it's gonna be even more radical. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Subscribe if you like. Um, I'll have another video coming up pretty soon. It's gonna be about a week before I get my uh, crankshaft rods and pistons and everything back so I could start assembling and I got to go buy a couple of gauges I bought a feeler gauge because I lost mine I got to get a board gauge and a dial indicator and that's about it and then uh, hopefully next week I can start putting it together gap the rings and uh, I'm gonna go with boost in the future right now it's gonna be naturally inspired um, so I'm thinking I'm going to go with a 20 thou upper ring and a 22 thou second ring gap to make up the difference. Originally from the factory it would have been 16 thou on the top, 20 thou on the bottom. So 20 thou on the top, that's 4 thou more, that's pretty good. So I think that'll make up and take care of the problems. And you won't expand enough to break the ring lands. And speaking of ring lands, the original pistons are pretty Mickey Mouse compared to the Summit Racing Forge pistons that I purchased. Uh, the ring lines are way thicker, and actually here is a stock factory piston. There's the valve reliefs. There's the ring land on the top. That's just above the top ring, that little space. And the Summit Racing Pistons, the, the forged aluminums, are literally twice as thick as that coming up the ring land. So, here are my stock pistons. You can see the wear mark there. I think this is the one that's seized in the cylinder. Um, yeah, that's about it. So I'm waiting for the parts and I can start assembling. And you guys stay tuned, subscribe, and hit the notification button. You'll see my next video when it comes out and I will be bringing it out real soon, as soon as I get those parts. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Bye-bye.